Just a reminder that these videos are made for adult doll collectors or adults buying dolls for others. This is not a video for children. Viewer discretion is advised. Thank you very much for listening. Hello, Internet! My name is Kelsey, and welcome back to my closet. So today, guys, we are going to check out a Monster High doll. And recently, we had a new drop from Mattel Creations, Miss Lenore Loomington. She is a G1-style, brand-new character that they created exclusively for Mattel Creations and the adult collector market, of course, because she was $75. Which I can't 100% feel is justified, but I make myself feel better about things like that by doing payment plans through PayPal. But yeah, I think she's super pretty and I can't wait to get a better look at her. Like the second that her promo picture dropped, I was like, okay, I gotta set my alarm for Thursday at 12. And crazy, <laughs> she arrived to me the day after I ordered her. You know, she came out on a Thursday, she was here Friday and I was like, are you serious? That can't even be right. They must have had them boxed up and just ready to slap the label on it and ship them out right away. But like overnight shipping? That has never happened before. But hey, that means that I had her in plenty of time to make a review. So let's look at the box. She is in pretty much fully clear front window box. I think it's a sleeve that you can just pull up over so that if you wanted to display her in the packaging, without the shininess of the plastic, you could, and then you could still like touch her and stuff. And it says Lenore Loomington at the bottom. She has a garden and spider theme. As you could see, there's plenty of spider webs here. Plus in her backdrop, there are plenty of flowers, vines, grass, mushrooms, and candles. That seems to be another thing. It's really exciting that we have a brand new character and I hope this is a trend that they're going to continue in making more G1 styled new characters. Not that I don't love G3, I've been really enjoying G3 since it came out, but it makes me feel a little bit more connected to G1 because I wasn't there for the original run. So now it's kind of like I get to experience both ends of the Monster High spectrum. Continuing on the box, it says Lenore Loomington on this side. We have Monster High on this side. And even her little story is written in the spider web in the corner. You could barely see it. The text is really small, but I'm pretty sure it's the same words that are on the back here. And then we have some gorgeous artwork of Miss Lenore here floating along with her little spider friend and more flowers and spider webs. And then her story up here at the top. I know they kind of did a dramatic reading of it in the reveal video, but forgive me if I want to do my own on a dark and eerie night. Lenore saw a soft glowing light, full of curiosity with a lantern in her hand. She stumbled into a mysterious garden surrounded by glowing sand. This mysterious protected place was so secret and kept out of sight. It can only be entered by bright candlelight. The garden is home to a menagerie of ghostly creatures and flowers, all searching for that special someone who would spend time with them for hours. To be in the garden, you too become a ghostly apparition. But Lenore loved the garden and its creatures so much she wanted to stay with their permission. She noticed her body had become shimmery, ghostly, and very divine. She knew together in this ghostly garden they all can let their spirits shine. So basically, she died in the garden. <laughs> so she's got kind of a dark backstory that she just wandered into the garden and died and then <laughs> stayed there forever with the plants and the creatures. Kind of morbid, but you know, we need more of that in Monster High. We like the scary spookiness. That's why we're here. Let me take off this outer sleeve. So under that plastic, was more plastic. So she's double sealed in there. Okay, now we're gonna open her, open her. All right, guys, Lenore is out of the box and she is so pretty. She has saran hair, hallelujah. <laughs> you never know with Mattel. Let us get a nice close look at her. Her face is super pretty. I love ghost characters. Maybe I haven't said it before, I'm not sure. But you know, when a ghost character comes up, I'm kind of like, 
yes. Which is why it always bothered me that original Spectra's face just never vibed with me, but G3 Spectra's face really does, so I'm like super excited to finally get Spectra. She is a beautiful ghostly pale color with kind of a hint of a purpley bluish tone to it. It's really interesting. It almost has the look that she could glow in the dark, which don't know if she's supposed to or not. I will turn the lights out later. We, we can see if any parts of her or her accessories glow in the dark, but she looks super spooky with the way that they did her skin. And then of course she has kind of a bluish, I don't know how to describe it. It's almost like a flush, but obviously it's over her eyes. So I think they did the same kind of effect in the Haunted dolls from G1, where there was just kind of like a darker color that's kind of supposed to symbolize that they're a ghost. So I love that. I just, I don't, everything about it just gives her that ethereal, otherworldly, spectral vibe. And then getting in even closer, her eyebrows are kind of an indigo, color. She has a super, super dark, shiny purple lipstick. Her eyes are magenta and she has a lot going on with her makeup. Her pupils are also dark blue. They're not black. So that also kind of adds to the ghostliness. So her makeup, she has pink eyeshadow. And then above that, she has some blue buffed out eyeshadow. Her eyelashes are also black and pink and that's on the top and bottom. You can see there's kind of an alternating pattern going on there. And then down here, we have this glitter coming in drips, kind of like she's crying sparkly tears, which I'm not sure why she's crying. It's kind of sad unless she realized that she died in the garden and then she's like, oh my God, <laughs> I just went in here and I never came out, oh my God. <laughs> because she seemed like otherwise she was pretty happy to stay with the residents of the garden. It doesn't totally go with her story that she's crying, but I do like the effect. Up here, this is actually a headband, which I, I thought it was just one piece that was tied on with some thread, like a lot of headpieces are in Monster High, but if you pull her hair back here, it is actually a full headband that is currently pinned to her head with the plastic ties. Her hair is in pretty good shape. I, I don't think I have to wash it. Maybe just a good brushing with a little spritzing, not like a full wash. It's actually pretty nice. There's no product in it. Oh, thank God. <laughs> so anyway, her headband is a kind of translucent greenish blue spider web with a melting trio of candles that are pink and you have the little yellow flames. Again, I really like the candle imagery. The pink might be a little out of place. I mean, I guess it kind of reflects her eyes. It's very noticeable, like your eye is drawn to the pink when you see her from a distance because the rest of her is this very purple, blue, green, very cool tone. And she does have pinkish shoes also, but they are not as bright and we'll get to them later. Baby pink, bubblegum pink was not the correct choice for the candles, but I like the candle element in the first place. It makes me feel like she could be the personification of the Litwick line of Pokemon. Ghost Pokemon, I love ghost type Pokemon. She would either be the personification or if she was a Pokemon trainer, she would be using them as her mains. And then we get to the hair. So she has a couple different colors. The main part of the hair is black. Black, as you can see in the underneath. But she does have some really, really light purple streaks on either side. And then in the back, she has this lighter minty green color. I guess it's supposed to be kind of like, you know, emphasizing the ghostly paleness. I might have liked it if they blended this part of the hair a little bit more with the black so that it was more streaks rather than just one solid chunk of this mint green. But from the front, you can't really see it the same anyway. So just one small critique. We can look at her earrings. So it's the same plastic as the spider web for the headpiece. And we have, I think this is supposed to be a flower of some kind or some kind of plant as the post. 
and it goes down into a little candle that is inside of a little candle holder, like a lantern shape almost, and the earrings are the same on both sides. Her other one's just kind of caught up in her hair, but again, love the candle imagery. And now we can look at her outfit. So in the promo pictures, they make this fabric look super stiff. And there are some stiff parts because we have all this applied glitter on top, but the actual fabric is flowy. In the picture, they have it because they're trying to make it look like she's floating and they're taking pictures. So they make it look like it's that starchy kind of fabric that doesn't move. This definitely does move even with the glitter that is on it. So I really like that. It's a little bit sheer also. You can kind of see my fingers and her legs through it, but it's not super sheer. And you know, sheer makes sense for a ghost character because a lot of ghosts you can see right through them. So I really do like the material that they chose. Let's start at the top here. Actually, I wanna take off the body piece thing that's around her before we look at the dress because you know, you can't see all the pretty details on the dress with this plastic thing. All right, there we go. So this is what her outfit looks like without the plastic chain vines. And it's a little more plain looking without that piece, but still not bad. Maybe if she had a necklace here instead, like a really long necklace, this is probably the weakest piece out of everything because it's not even painted the way some of her other accessories are painted. You know, $75, you could give us a little more paint. Let's actually look at the silhouette of this dress. It is super gorgeous and Victorian in inspired, which you guys know is also one of my favorite things. The top part we have off the shoulder sleeves that have a little bit of puff at the shoulder. We've got black straps to help hold it up. We have netting over top of the bodice here and it goes down into a little overskirt, I believe the word for it is peplum, that I learned from Darling Dolls today when he roasted Lenore in his video. I love him, but I I disagree. I can't agree with him. I love her, Lenore. It doesn't mean that I've changed my opinion on Darling. Anyway, so we have that, and then the sleeves go down into these big bells, and at the ends, we have the applied glitter. So we have dots going into a full trim of black glitter. And this glitter is not coming off on my fingers. It's not even like a super shiny glitter, as you can see with the, with the light shining directly on it. It's not picking up and reflecting a lot and sparkling, sparkling. It's just to give it a little gentle shimmer to make it look like she's glowing in the night. This is a beautiful navy blue color. I feel like this is a color we don't get a lot on dolls. And also there were plastic protective sleeves under her sleeves. And I took one of them off when I was unboxing her, but I might put it back on just because with a dress of this dark color, there's a possibility of staining. And then we get down to the skirt, which has this super long train at the back, and I love this. And the print on the skirt is of the spooky garden where Lenore is now laid to rest. We have mushrooms, we have moths and other bugs, we have a bat, flowers, spider webs, interspersed, oh, there's a a rat or a mouse right here. On the back, there's another moth, another bat. The pattern continues all the way around and it's all in that applied glitter. And then of course, all the way around the edge, there is a thicker black border. I need to figure out, first of all, I need to figure out where she's going because I'm not sure where I want to display her. And I need to figure out how I'm gonna get this train to really train because I love it. I love the idea of it and I need it to look like she's floating along with her spooky train. And again, there is a little bit of stiffness at the bottom. It makes it a little heavier too at the bottom though. So it lays and doesn't 
poof out up here because I think this could be more ball gownish if you had tissue paper or whatever up here. But because the glitter at the bottom pulls it and weighs it down, it lays a little bit more like... I don't know how, how you would classify this kind of dress, but yeah, it, I think that was the idea. Okay, so let's put the chains back on. So actually the chains have sleeves almost, or armholes, I guess. It connects in the back with a peg into a hole. So you do have to put the sleeves of the dress through the chains to get it on her. And Monster High just loves their chains on ghost characters for whatever reason. Kiyomi Haunterly that I have from G1. She also has chains. Vandela doubloons, Spectra, obviously. They love that Jacob Marley chain ghost thing go. <laughs> they've seen Christmas Carol and they want you to know that they've seen Christmas Carol. Here are the chains back on. See, I was kind of getting used to what it looked like without them, but it's still okay. It's still fine. Again, they're that greenish plastic that they use for the earrings and the headpiece, and they curl around kind of like vines at the same time as being chains. In the center, we have some flowers. There's a flower up here with some leaves, and it continues onto the back where we get a little bit of a spidery web moment. It's it's not a bad piece, but like I said, we could have used a little paint on these flowers just to bring them out a little bit more. Oh, I will point out she has a little slip attached to her dress with just a tiny little trim of lace. A nice extra detail. It's a stretchy knit material. And now we come to the shoes. And again, they are pink, but they're not as bright of a pink as the candle up here, plus they're a little bit translucent. They also have these vines, and I they are separate pieces, but they're rubber banded on, and they don't look like if I took them off, why are they both on? I guess you're supposed to display her like this, so she's floating in this direction perpetually. <laughs> they don't look like they would stay on the shoes if I take these rubber bands off, so I think we're gonna leave them. So on this side, you can see the full design of the boot. It is translucent pink. There is a cutout for the heel right there. There is some molded lace in the back area, a little molded ruffle up here, and then there's a molded what's supposed to be kind of like a strap going over the toe. They are pointed in the front, and then the heels are wisps of smoke, which makes it look like she's walking on air or in the mist, and I love that. Then we have the chains on this side, which pretty much mirror the chain on her chest. We have the same flowers, leaves, and vines in that greenish plastic. I like the fact that we have the vine detail, like the garden is grabbing onto her feet, holding her there. I also do like that the skirt is not so long in the front that you can't see the shoes, because sometimes they do these really cool shoes and then you can't even see them under the dress. I wish that they were able to stay on her without the rubber bands. This is the second time now that they've done a collector doll with shoes that have other pieces, which is cool because it gives them more detail, but the pieces fall off. They could have done like a little peg in the side of the shoe so that it would snap into place, but do it better than Draculaura's shoes. Vampire hearts, little bats were always falling off. Rant over. I haven't done a review in so long. I've got a lot of thoughts in my mind. That is Lenore and her outfit, and she comes with a couple things. First of all, we have a classic Monster High stand. Thank God it's not the saddle stand that they used for Vampire Heart Draculaura. Editing me here. So the stand is actually not very good. It's taller than a normal stand because you're supposed to be able to make it look like she's floating, which was a nice idea, but there's no way to position it so that it looks nice with the dress. If you have it on the outside, it blocks the train from flowing. If you have it on the inside, you get this. And also the clasp piece is not staying in one place. So if you try to position her the way you want, chances are she's gonna slide around, which is also not good. I now kind of wish that she had a saddle stand. I might need to buy a saddle stand for her. Anyway, back to the other me. She comes with 
a little spider pet who also has the pink candles on his back or her back, has the same eye color as Lenore, black lips, the main body is a bluish green or greenish blue, and ombre legs into black. And that's what it looks like on the bottom but I cannot find any information about the name of this creepy crawly if you guys have any information on what this pet's name is because it's not on the listing on Mattel creations and I I don't know it's not in the box anywhere please let me know if you know anything and if not what would you name this little guy there is of course a certificate of authenticity and Lenore's little lantern that she took with her into the garden when she first showed up. Now this I think does glow in the dark, especially because we have this clear plastic being used, but it's an old school candle holding lantern. There is a skelet on the top here and all of it is made, well this part is actually separate. So we have blue translucent plastic. It has some intricate details molded into the outside of the lantern. The candle is non-removable. We have this handle, which also has some swirly patterns to it. And again, the little skelet at the top. And then now that Lenore lives in the garden, the lantern has acquired this cobweb decoration because she's been in there for so long that it's covered in cobwebs. And we can give it to her so that she can trek in the night with her lantern and check on her ghostly garden friends. Like I said, I want to see if anything that she is wearing or has on her glows in the dark. So let me shut the lights off. I guess the candle is kind of glowing, but that's about it. None of her other accessories or anything are glowing in the dark. Lighting is all messed up, so let's close out this video. That is Lenore Loomington, and I, again, think that she is super pretty, but perhaps not worth $75. I mean, Mattel has a lot to live up to now because they made Vampire Heart Draculaura, who for $100 actually felt like she was worth a hundred dollars, had all that detail and materials that were usually not used, a cage skirt and everything, so anything after that we're gonna be comparing. You made your own bed there, Mattel. But do I think that Lenore is a bad doll at all? No. Without looking at the price, I think she is a gorgeous new addition to the G1 lineup. I love her face. I love her theming. I love the design and the material that they used for the dress and that we have another ghostly ghoul to add to our Monster High collections. So you guys let me know what you think of Lenore. Did you buy her and or are you going to buy her because I believe she is still available on Mattel Creations. Also if you didn't see it already I did post a special video about a giveaway that I'm doing of a Rainbow High doll in preparation for my 2000 subscriber milestone on this channel, which I hope I will hit eventually because it's been a long time. If you didn't check that out, I will put a link to it on the end of the video. And as always, thanks so much for watching the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, and until next time, and in honor of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, this is so not the era that I lived in.